The Harvard doctor who was able to completely reverse the aging process in mice says it's no longer a question of if human immortality is possible, it's a question of when, which means this century, humanity might defeat the ultimate final boss, death itself. So long facelifts and freezers and funny looking face masks, the first person to reach 500 years old is probably walking among us right now. Mark Zuckerberg, Kim Kardashian, Jeff Bezos, Sam Altman, the founders of Google, and basically the majority of all billionaires are all heavy investors in the longevity industry because when you have all of the money in the world, the only thing you can't buy is more time. Well, until now. In 1848, archaeologists went to what is now northern Iraq, hoping to find records that stories from the Bible were true. But what they found instead was the oldest library in the world, with a 4,000-year-old story that was so riveting, the first person to translate it started stripping from excitement. I'm not kidding. It was the Epic of Gilgamesh, the king of Uruk, who went on a long journey through the underworld in order to discover the secret of immortality. After facing off against gods and evil spirits, a devious snake, and even finding an immortal man, Gilgamesh made peace with the ultimate lesson that death comes for everybody. He went back to Uruk after accepting his mortality with a new sense of appreciation for life, vowing to spend the rest of his life doing as many good deeds as possible, writing his story down so future generations could learn from him that no person is immortal. The end. I'm just kidding, because the anti-aging industry was valued at $63 billion in 2021 and is expected to rise to $93 billion by 2027. And we can't ignore the fact that this industry is mostly targeted towards women, who on average will spend over $225,000 on their appearance over their lifetime. That's a lot of money, ladies. More sleep, no alcohol, cold showers, plastic surgery, daily physical activity, creatine, collagen, and over 100 different supplements and vitamins. You need to do whatever it takes to look and feel as young as possible. But those are just the steps that the everyday run-of-the-mill person can follow and achieve, the billionaires on the other hand are thinking a lot bigger and a little bit weirder. Billionaire PayPal co-founder turned venture capitalist Peter Thiel once said in 2014 that he stands against confiscatory taxes, totalitarian collectives, and the ideology of the inevitability of the death of every individual. At the time, he said he was taking HGH as part of his plan to live to be 120 and made headlines a few years later when it came out he was interested in taking blood transfusions from young people as a means of improving health and potentially reversing aging. Now, his team came out and denied these claims shortly after, but there were three US companies, Ambrosia, Alkahest, and the Young Blood Institute, who either were or still are selling young blood transfusions for six to $200,000 a pop. The Jeff Bezos-backed startup Altos Labs is pursuing biological reprogramming technology, a way to rejuvenate cells in the lab that some scientists think could be extended to revitalize entire animal bodies, ultimately prolonging human life. Similarly, Dr. Aubrey de Grey from the SENS Research Foundation believes believes that the fundamental process of getting older is caused by damage accumulation to cells over time, which they've categorized into what they call the seven deadly things, all which they believe to be preventable. Even Google has a research and development company called Coleco, whose mission is to harness advanced technologies and model systems to increase our understanding of the biology that controls human aging. And who could forget 21 Savage, who wants to be cryogenically frozen to live to see the year 2121. Sam Altman, the CEO of OpenAI, apparently paid a $10,000 deposit to a company called Nectome, who plans on uploading human consciousness onto a computer so they can live forever in some sort of digital afterlife like San Junipero or Upload. Now, these all have a lot of ifs, ands, whens, and buts that come with them, but what if I told you there was already a biologically immortal animal living right here on Earth that researchers are currently studying? Right off the coast of the Mediterranean Sea, you can find the T. dorney jellyfish, the world's only biologically immortal animal. Every time the T. dorney gets injured, old, or sick, it basically hits the reset button on its life, shrinking in on itself and starting over as if it were a baby. It basically gets to the end of its life, Benjamin buttons itself, grows up, and then reverses its life cycle over and over again. The life cycle reversal can be repeated constantly, and as long as the jellyfish wants to, it will never die of old age, which is a key thing to remember in human anti-aging, because no amount of biological reprogramming is going to save you from getting off in some other non-pleasant way. Which is just one of the ways human immortality might affect us as a population. The odds are, if we have a population of 200-year-olds who are immune to illness and aging, they're probably going to be really scared to leave their house. Us mortals know that no matter what, we're all going to die in the end, so we might as well take some risks while we're alive so that we really live. But if you knew that you might actually be able to live forever, would you really put yourself in any position where you might get into an accident and die? Because 
at that point, even getting into a car, you're risking your chance of eternity. But beyond that, imagine the other impacts that's going to have on society. Because if you have children at the age of 30, by the time they're 30, you're both going to look the same. And what would that mean for careers? How many times would people go back to school, reinvent themselves, or retire? What if we had dictators who decided to stay in office for 100 years? But saying that, it also might encourage people to care a lot more about our planet if they plan on still living here in the year 2200. Well, we're probably going to find out sooner rather than later, with Bill Morris, the former CEO of Google Ventures, saying that by 2050, anyone with a healthy body and bank account will have a serious shot at immortality. But here's the thing. Death has always been the great equalizer. No matter who you were, what you'd done, or how much you'd earned, we all ended up in the same place. And I mean, I'm kind of a hypocrite on this topic because half of me is like, we shouldn't do this. And the other half of me wants to see us colonize and terraform Mars, visit an exoplanet, maybe meet aliens. You never know what we're going to get up to in the future. And I kind of want to be around to see it. But like I said, can you really live if you're never going to die? Isn't that what Gilgamesh tried to teach us 4,000 years ago? And you know, maybe Tony Stark was right. Part of the journey is the end.